Your Creative Push, episode 212. There are so many ways you can do the thing. There are so many ways you can second guess yourself. There are so many ways you can push yourself through. But do one of them. But there's one of those people inside of us and maybe some people outside of us that think we can do the thing. That really believe we can do the thing we want to do. You want to listen to everybody, but you want to trust those people. And I find myself again on the outside of a window where everyone's in. And I find the writing comes easy when the talking gets so dead. Welcome to Your Creative Push, the podcast that pushes you to pursue your creative passions. I'm your host, Young Min Brown, and you were just listening to the song Glass and Timber by my guest today, Caves and Clouds. Caves and Clouds is a new ensemble created by E.W. Harris and Joe Kroger. They are a collaborative outgrowth of the Big City Folk Collective in New York City. Currently, they are raising stake funds with Indiegogo for their debut record and the follow-up touring schedule. E.W. and Joe, welcome to the show. How's it going? Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Uh, It's a pleasure. Um, So I was hoping each of you could maybe uh, set the stage, if you will, and tell us uh, kind of about your creative life right up until the point that you guys came together to form Caves and Clouds. Joe, you want to go first? Uh, No, but I will. Okay. (laughs) Um, I have a pretty just artsy waterfall of a backstory. You know, I I grew up with my dad playing guitar on the edge of my bed kind of thing, very much a folksy household where we would sit around and sing songs in the living room, but also had a lot of sort of training. I went to performing arts school, sang in church, kind of all the things that backstory a a singer songwriter. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and then started writing with my brother as a teenager. And we had some really tragically bad bands and, uh, (laughs) And a couple of okay songs that we had a lot of fun with and just just kept writing as I went through school and moved to New York and got plugged in with the big city folk scene with EW, with Niall Connolly, with a lot of the guys up here and just started playing out at open mics and cafes and bars and venues, you know, as many nights a week as I could and just toured a bit around uh, around the Northeast here and in Europe and in the Midwest and... Um, I've released two solo albums, solo EPs, and I'm looking for a good ending to this story. <laughs> um, well, the good ending is is collaborating with EW. <laughs> absolutely. I, I mean, collaborating with a Hopefully. lot of these guys has been <laughs> has been an incredible process, and and definitely uh, we work together in New York in numerous situations and circumstances, and and it's been a lot of fun to cross paths and play shows together. And I'm just really looking forward to working together more on this project. EW, your turn. That's my turn. That's your cue. Well, yeah, right on, right on, right on. So um, myself, I uh, was a singer-songwriter a long time ago, like when I was a kid. That was my thing. You know, I just basically, the only records I had growing up were my dad's old Donovan records. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And And so I'm listening to Donovan records and... Cat Stevens records and stuff like that. And honestly, I, I remember having this thought. I was sort of like, I could do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. And then, uh, 
my folks are interesting as musicians, as creative individuals themselves. My mom is a total pro. Uh, she was a professional like jazz singer and did a bunch of stuff with show bands and whatnot when I was a little, little kid. And my dad is like the guy in the guitar store playing, you know, Led Zeppelin covers. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> and he never remembers the words to anything. So there's... <laughs> An interesting kind of tension there, you know, that I was sort of in the middle of. So I get into that. But honestly, like, I tried to get away from both of those things for the majority of my career thus far and uh, did experimental music for a lot of years, kind of like, you know, sequencers and circuit bent Nintendos, crap like that. But, you know, I kind of, I'm from Athens, Georgia, so the ship kind of ran out on things that were interesting to do and money that was easy to make. Mm. You know? <laughs> Mm-hmm. And so I ended up uh, just getting on a bus and coming here to New York City about seven years ago and uh, lived in the park for a little while, you know, a couple weeks, and then an art studio with the bathroom lived, down the hall. Huh? Lived in in the park, you said? <laughs> yeah, in Central Park. It's the easiest one. Nice. You just want to hide in, you know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Yeah. It is. There's all these burn embankments and stuff, and it's soft. And I had a green blanket, so it was real easy to hide. I feel mm-hmm. like there are some spots in Prospect Park you could get away with. <laughs> oh, I imagine. I imagine so. I didn't even know Prospect Park existed. I didn't know the G train existed, <laughs> which leads us to the next point in the story, which is, uh, so when I got here, I didn't really have any friends. And so I was like, kind of like, I still remember how to play some of these like songs with words. You know what I mean? <laughs> And mm-hmm. so I'm going to go down to this open mic around the corner and see if there's anybody there. And I met this cat named Justin Storer, who I proceeded to get a little bit too drunk in order to overcome my social anxiety. And mm-hmm. then uh, Justin was like, you got to come to this other thing, you know. And I got on this mysterious G train. I did not know it existed. Some guy was playing a vibraphone in there. And I was like... New York City is the coolest place I've ever been. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a well into yeah. the Irish pub in the back room. I don't even remember the voyage, you know. This guy, Justin Storr, he drags me into this place, and uh, there's this Irish guy named Niall Connolly hosting this thing, which is like an open mic night, but it's not really, you know, because everybody's like really, really, really good, <laughs> mm. you know. And so... I caught the last half of that and then uh, played a couple of songs for him, and he really liked them. And then uh, he was like, I'm missing a guitar player uh, for the next couple of weeks. Do you want to come play some tunes with me at this rando gig? And I just got started doing music in New York City that way. And Dial is the founder of that of the, the Big City Folk Collective. You know, that's kind of mm. been his ongoing project for about the last 10 years, I'd say, in addition to his own work. But uh, some sometime fairly early on in that process, I, I came across Joe in that sort of environment. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, again, like I do record production as well, you know, and I've, I've been trying to make a Joe Kroger record for far too long. You know what I mean? <laughs> mm-hmm. But the thing of it is, is that like, you know, it's like one of these things where it's like everybody's got something going on all the time. It's the nature of sort of. Uh, just living in the city and just running around all over the place all the time. And so we never got around to it. But she's always the first call. Like, it's like, I need a singer on this. <laughs> you know? Yeah, she's need, your go-to I, girl. Right, absolutely. I need some arrangement on this. It's like, hey, you want a pub gig? I got I got something else I got to do. You know what I mean? So it was like one of these things where the thing for me and one of the reasons I've been pushing this whole business so hard is that at the moment, like, the whole socio-political environment at the moment, is this is the first time this has ever happened. I don't get upset about a lot of things, you know? I'm kind of a free-floating agent, you know? Mm. But, like, the whole thing has been making me really nervous. And that one of the things about it is that I feel like the only thing within my power to do is to, like, cooperate with people, <laughs> you know? And, like, try to get involved, <laughs> try to get into ideas, Do you know what I mean? Participate in ideas rather than to just kind of do my thing and, you know, whatever. Right. But in this case, I I reached out to Joe, and uh, you'll attest to this. She'd been bugging me for a minute to do a southern tour. (laughs) (laughs) It's true. (laughs) true. And I was like, 
you know what? I got a better idea. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, like he says, we've been trying to work together in a lot of ways. And we have been working together in a lot of ways for a That's long true. time. That's true. I mean, we have. For all intensive, all intensive purposes. <laughs> How many are there? Dude, yeah. as a writer of that, uh, you just <laughs> grinding my gears there, man. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, man. You can you can cut that up. No, nah, no, nah, it's cool. That that and supposedly, it's one of his favorite jokes. He he says intensive purposes a lot because you know, because we know we know we got our gears grind into. I also have lots of intensive purposes. You know what I mean? That's true. Yeah, it's, it's important to have those. They're very important. But, uh, Sorry, Joe, you were saying? Oh, I was just saying it's very much a mutual admiration society situation where we're, mm. we're, you know, I've been running around the scene here admiring EW's projects for a long time. And there Likewise. are very few people who are hailed with as much respect in sort of that songwriting scene. And, uh, and so sort of this idea of both of us trying to nail each other down for a project and kind of missed connections over and over again. Um, he really did. He won up to me. I was, I was hounding him about a Southern tour and, and he was like, well, how about this? And, mm. uh, and I think we've just both been really excited to take it and run with it from there. Mm-hmm. I completely agree. Well, I, re- I really like that idea of, <laughs> and th- it's funny how like ideas are like happen all the time on this show. Like just like themes kind of come up from guest to guest to guest, like mm-hmm. in a row. And one of the things uh, we've been talking about recently with a lot of people is that idea of uh, like in a very uncertain political climate where everybody is arguing against each other and kind of just adding to this like mountain of just um, bullshit for for lack of a better word, (laughs) just adding to this argument. Um, I think it's like the artist's and the creative people's responsibility to use your kind of um, creative calling in order to create something new to add to a different conversation, if that makes sense, and to kind yeah. of add your own voice. And I think that collaboration is is the perfect way to kind of do that. Like we all need to be coming together. So why not be coming together like as artists, you know? Yeah. Agreed. I mean, I think that, you know, obstructionism is kind of the word of the day, mm. you know, in this era. <laughs> that's right. And that's, you know, and that's the people that you're opposed to. It's the people you align with. There's a lot of like, let's stop this or, hey, stop trying to stop my that. And I think there's a lot of reason for all of it, you know, uh, whether it's good or bad. But like you said, I think that finding ways that we can be constructive and being ways that we can be creative uh, together is is a pretty crucial goal. Absolutely agree with that. So what was the process like of being like, all right, let's start this new thing. Like uh, you said, you've, you know, kind of been in the same uh, realm for, for a little while and you've known that you wanted to do something, but what was the kind of inciting moment that made you say, all right, let's, let's make this a thing. I don't know. What was it for you, Joe? Cause I'm actually very curious about this. <laughs> mm. On the spot. Um, on the spot. I mean, I'm actually it's... just going to give you credit on this. We've played shows together. We've toured with other people. We were talking about touring and you just called it out. You were like, well, we're going on tour anyway. Why don't we make this a project? Like, you know, we talked about it and we talked about it from a few different angles about how we'd wanted to work on this. I mean, part of the problem too is that I had been taking a backseat for a number of reasons, just in terms of a couple different projects I'm a part of recently. And one of the things that EW was kind of doing was calling me out on selling myself a little (laughs) short recently. Uh, we were we were down at this cafe in Brooklyn, and he was just like, "Hold on, <laughs> hold on now." <laughs> it was basically a little bit of like, "Where'd you go?" And uh, mm. I think I was hitting the sauce too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and he wasn't he wasn't. I mean, you were saying you like to encourage people on this in these interviews to to sort of take the bull by the horns, and that's kind of a moment that was happening. You know, we had a a bit of loss in my. Uh, in my family, in my, in my sphere. And, and I just kind of was just kind of hiding out and EW just kind of called me out and brought me back into a creative vein Mm -hmm. said, you know, let's not just do the same old thing we've been doing. Let's make something new. And I think I really personally, I selfishly, I needed that, you know, I needed my good friend and, and amazingly respected uh, collaborator to just say, let's do something new together. Yeah, 
I think that's why it's so important to have those kind of collaborators. And that the whole reason for this podcast is to have that kind of community of people that will help to encourage and push each other to kind of like be like, hey, you're not quite living up to your potential right now. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, um, you know, and like I was playing, I play words with friends and mm-hmm. uh, like it's like Scrabble basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm familiar. I'm always getting nudged because I'm like, I take too long to, to make my move. And I, f- I feel like that that's like really the job of, uh, when you get in the, these collaborations and when you find friends that know your potential, when you kind of are holding back, like you said, mm-hmm. uh, Joe, t- like t- kind of taking a back seat, you know, you need to be nudged yeah. <laughs> and be like, yo, yo, take your turn. <laughs> yeah. It's time to like push yourself, you know? Yeah. I think I was, I was telling him that I, uh, I had felt like I'd been pushing myself, uh, in the wrong way. And so I'd like sat down for a minute. You know, and like, mm. you know, when you're, you're just kind of like knocking your head against a wall and you just have to sit down. And if you sit down for a second, you'll look to your left and be like, oh, there's like a door. I didn't need to knock my head <laughs> against that wall. That was kind of <laughs> what needed to happen for me. I was kind of knocking my head against the wall. I just needed to sit down. And then Eric kind of came along and he's like, hey, there's this door over here. You want to, you want to go, go down that hallway? You want to go down that project? So that's kind of, right. yeah. I mean, and it, it, there's a part of it with me too, that it's like. I get bored really easy, but I also get lonely really easily. So I feel, I feel like always <laughs> taking some, doing some new thing with all these people I've recruited into my scheme. You know, <laughs> like I yeah. remember in high school, we used to, we, you know, we would drive. Me and my buddy Dawkins would drive into Atlanta, looking for the best hot wings, regardless of where it was. You know, <laughs> and it yeah. was one of these, you know, it was one of these things where it's like. You know, he he didn't really leave the county very much, you know, and it's just kind of like, let's do it, let's do it, you know, and these sorts of things, like, I guess, for me, have translated into, it's not just the adventure that you're going on and the stories you can tell about it, but it's also, like, the experiences you can share with the people that you also did, and I think the the journey of creating artwork is very similar to anything else, you know, in that respect. And, uh, I mean, a big reason to take this particular turn for me was that, like, you know, there's something about singer-songwriters and all folk and folk-adjacent genres that I was talking in an interview about fairly recently, is that, like, one of the things that people do is they uh, focus in on this idea of uh, authenticity, you know, and they focus on the, in on this idea of traditionalism, and it becomes this sort of narrow, you know, very monocultural kind of idea. And I just, I don't think that's very fun. I don't think, I think it's very exciting. Mm. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, I mean, it's like I said in an interview recently with a Scottish sci-fi blog, we can get into that if you want, but the, <laughs> the what the Scottish sci-fi a Scottish blog sci-fi blog called the Speculative Bookshop. Okay, um, and <laughs> so it's not just sci-fi; it's not just Scottish; it's Scottish sci-fi. Oh, yeah, I played their <laughs> event last year in Glasgow. It was amazing. Oh, nice! <laughs> That's so cool. I've never been so intimidated in my life. Do you know, like literary <laughs> yeah. sci-fi geeks. You know, they knew every <laughs> reference I yeah. was dropping. You know, they were taking me toe to toe on Star Trek Deep Space Nine like it was nobody's business. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> that long story short, though, I, I mean, I said I said in a recent interview about that because, again, like the question of folk music comes up, particularly as I kind of operate outside of the normal parameters of it. It comes up. People ask me about it. It's like, well, how are you this? You know, Mm. and I was like, well, it's a problematic genre, you know, a problematic genre. Is it acoustic guitars? Is it old songs? Is it like certain types of melodies? Is it simple forms? Is it the dominance of a narrative element? Is it, what is it, you know? And I was like, well, I mean, you know, it's like a grab bag of those things. And most people who like quote unquote folk music will pick two or three that they like better than others and then go for that. But ultimately what you have is you have a situation that's very similar. It reflects the society and the things that people are talking about. And I find it problematic when it's dominated by mildly attractive white men playing two long songs (laughs) that have, you know, done one of the following, one or all of the following things, like having a meaningful experience in the woods, you know, Mm -hmm. attempted a 
long distance relationship with when, with limited success. You know, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's all sorts. Of, uh, go if you go to the speculative bookshop uh, Glasgow site. There's a whole laundry list of them. I'm way funnier in print than I am in person. <laughs> but the, <laughs> but I mean the long the the long story of it is is like part of it is me seeing myself as part of the problem and reaching out to Joe and being like, not only are you fr- my friend and not only are you one of the best songwriters I know, but also there's an artistic exercise in me reaching out to you that is beneficial to me. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I always look for a trifecta of reasons to do something, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. And in this case, it's just the list of reasons just goes on and on and on and on and on. Right. And I think when when people get those kinds of uh, things that keep telling them, yes, you're supposed to be doing this, like that keeps nudging you in a certain way to to, to go towards something. It's just like you at some point got to do it. So might as well do it sooner than later. Like once you get a couple, a couple good reasons, like just just start <laughs> it rather than waiting, you know, Absolutely. months or years yeah. to, to do it. I couldn't agree with you more. <laughs> I think EW and I both, uh, I think one of the things that we do well to and for each other is, you know, he's talking about a lot of the sort of uh, pitfalls and stereotypes of the acoustic singer songwriter. And I think we both catch ourselves falling into that. But I think we're also both able to tell ourselves, tell each other when A, we're being too hard on ourselves and just be like, stop, mm. just write a song. It's okay. And B, when we're not being hard enough on each other. Mm. <laughs> like, I yeah, think, yeah, I think that's sure. one of the reasons why we're drawn to each other too, is because we both want to challenge that formula a little bit but we're also both able to say no this is this is good calm down it's okay <laughs> like it's, yeah, it's, a yeah. good, it's a good match of um accountability mm. so important and I, I know your your friend richard t scott talks about you know accountability partners too and just like i think it's so important to have that just when you need to be nudged <laughs> uh yeah. it's, it's just as important that you need to be kind of like like, no, you're doing great. Like, <laughs> this is okay, yeah. you know? Well, I mean, that's one of the great gifts of working in kind of a pared-down musical ensemble, too. You know? In that, like, you're doing that in real time in a lot of cases. Do you know? hmm Which I find extraordinarily useful. Right. So, let's talk about Indiegogo and kind of what you guys are trying to do. Uh, you know, kind of starting this whole thing and asking for, for help. Can, uh, can you kind of talk about that whole process? Well, um, no, most of the production I'll, I'll start cause I already did. I'm sorry, <laughs> <laughs> it's been done. No, well, I just, I'm thinking about it all the time. You know what I mean? So I got mm-hmm. like the, the quick answer, the hustle going on, but trying, you know, mm-hmm, trying, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but the, uh, the thing, the thing with crowdfunding as a deal, I have very strong opinions about the concept. I think it's really, really cool. I think it's like futuristic and I think it's hopeful and I think it's all sorts of, you know, big ideas. The problem is it's not always practical. But the good thing in this particular situation, I've done a bunch of them before. And not, I've done a few that I've been the person, the point person on, you know, it's like, please, can you help support my project? Or a few summers ago, I was making some records and we don't have air conditioning and the studio room is sound treated. So it gets like 112 degrees in there, you know, and the computer died and we community sourced replacement equipment because I try to, the whole thing is like DIY plus, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, like, one of the things I was trying to encourage people to do, and a lot of the records that I've produced, it's been this whole kind of group enterprise. There's lots of people in our community, like, playing on the records. There's lots of people involved in the production process, and we're basically making it for what people can afford to do it, to give us, you know, after a certain threshold. And so, crowdfunding is the perfect thing for that. And we've used a lot of different platforms. But uh, I thought it was really good to go with Indiegogo in this particular case. One reason is because I really liked the format. <laughs> mm-hmm. And additionally, because I'm just really trying to sample. I've worked with almost all the other ones. And I was just try- I'm trying to see what they're all about, you know. And they're all ap- not appreciably different, you know. But the, um, 
the the process of going into it, I know, Joe, you had some reservations about doing a crowdfunding in the first place, because it really does seem like you're just panhandling people on the internet. Yeah, it's nerve wracking, you know, like, because I think especially we were talking about the polit- the sociopolitical sort of spectrum right now. And I think everybody I know is sort of dug around in their budgets and seen where they didn't realize they had $5 before to give to, you know, some fund that they believe in, because, you know, they're trying to be, be more active in one way or another. So, mm. you know, and that's me too. You know, I've, I've looked for ways to support print media I believe in or, you know, uh, rights organizations that I believe in. And so I think it's it's really important. And I think I, I'm very aware of my budgetary limitations. I'm certainly aware of everybody else's. But I think as, as EW said, it is a hopeful thing and it is a, a communal thing to say, let's let's be a part of this together. Even if it's as simple as, I, I was going to buy this album anyway. I'll buy it ahead of time so it can get printed. You know, mm. it's still something that says, "I want this to happen. Let's just make it happen." And I, Absolutely. I, I think that EW's enthusiasm for the format, for this this sort of like, let's all get in it together, is uh, pretty infectious. Actually, it was really <laughs> exciting. It was, like it is, it is. It, it was really exciting to start talking about, you know well, what can we do with this? How, how can we make this project better if we reach out to the people who have always said they want to be a part of this with us? It made it exciting because we know there are people who believe in us who want to be a part of this with us and want to be a part of you know, the process and the product and, and everything. And, and it made it really, um, really an optimistic endeavor in a pretty nihilistic time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's definitely one thing of... Uh, Additionally, like, there's so much, even if I'm only sort of interested in the project, right? If I get involved in a crowdfunding way, I'm like 100% more interested in what's right. actually happening. Yeah. Right, you know? you're a part of it, right. Absolutely. It's like some friends of mine recently, they're friends from before I got kicked out of music school. They, they do this, like, goth electronic thing, and they made a children's book. Mm. With another friend of mine did the illustrations, and it's like I don't know, it's Edgar Allan Poe children's book. It's weird. Don't get me wrong, it's weird. That sounds but awesome was, to me. Yeah, no, I mean it was pretty cool, and it's like very kind of steampunky type illustrations and stuff mm-hmm. in it. And I was like, I've never particularly been interested in like how children's books get printed. Or like what the binding is, or any of those type of things, and it's it's fascinating. And now I'm sort of involved, you know. And I think music for some people is really something that you put on the Spotify and and you just go with, and that it's not all of it. it all it is, and definitely I know from being around like a very active community of songwriters, people put so much thought into things like the the track order. You know, they put so much thought into like last minute lyrical changes. They put so much thought into who does the artwork and who does the packaging and who looks at these things. And they're making artistic choices about them, you know. So it's in some ways like I don't know if we've arrived at this point or it's always been like this. But there's definitely like a structural element that it, that requires artistic choices all along the way. You know, and budgetary choices and all these sorts of things. And we're doing them for a reason. And I think that crowdfunding is really interesting because it engages you not in just did I do it or did I not do it, but all the little things that I did or did not do adding up to this big thing, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think for a lot of people, it makes the whole idea both more endearing and less daunting if they want to do it themselves. (laughs) Right, (laughs) right. Yeah, I always find it interesting that um, I have a Patreon account and my my patrons, I have like kind of different reward levels. Mm -hmm. Not a single one of them has like cashed in on any of the rewards. They just want to kind of support it. But they're also like, I consider them like my Jedi council. Like, because they're, (laughs) they are like invested, you know, know, like they've, this has helped me. So I want to like do a little bit to help you out. And then you're just like, 
a team almost, you know what I mean? Like, and like you said, like they have, you know, skin in the game as it were. It's like when, when I bet on uh, some random basketball game, I could bet $5 on Mm -hmm. that. I would never watch if I bet five bucks on it. I am just watching every single play (laughs) and just like, you know, like I'm so invested in this game that I wouldn't have been uh, otherwise. So it's, it, the, the money is like, um, kind of a proof that, that like a proof of concept, like they're, they are a part of your, your tribe, you know? Totally. Totally. And I mean, that's that's kind of why we've been sort of indiscriminate about, like, yet some people choose to announce how much they gave or whatever it is, you know? Mm-hmm. Some people choose to remain anonymous. So, but, like, in our thank yous, I've been absolutely indiscriminate on that. It's like, if you're in, you're in, you know? Yeah. How much you're in right. is not for me to say. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Speaking of that, you, the highest level of your uh, campaign that you will perform a personal concert for them and cook oh, yeah. a meal and do the dishes. Yes. So, yeah. so, so wait, so who's going to cook? Who's going to do the dishes? What are you cooking? <laughs> uh, I, this is 100% collaborative. Am I right? About yeah, that? No, <laughs> because, no, because, no, because I'll tell you right now, we are not a team to be sneezed at when it comes to the kitchen. We did not put this on like as a cutesy thing. Like I've right. had Thanksgiving at EW's house. It's no joke. I've made Thanksgiving at my house. Like between the two of us, we like to cook food. We like to eat food. And Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that we like to do the dishes, but we're going to have a good time doing them. Absolutely. (laughs) Mm. So uh, I, 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 you don't, you don't need a full breakdown division of duties here because we're both in it 100%. I don't know that anybody would catch it on that, but we're hoping. Those kind of things. I mean, part of it is like, okay, you know, you're throwing us a Hail Mary, like, it's the least we can do to catch it. You mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. But, like, that was one of those things, too. It's like, there's so many things about the previous crowdfunding projects I've done before. We've been very kind of conservative in the, like, reward structure and everything like that. But with this project, I was like, what is the little, the smallest amount of money where we can get to the dream scenario? <laughs> And then if anybody really wants to throw us a to shoot the three pointer from the from the half from the from the midpoint, they can and mm-hmm. you know, I'm happy to go to their house and, and, and do whatever. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Within mm-hmm. you know, the law. <laughs> Within the law. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh man. Uh, so uh, it's kind of speaking of creative process. I was wondering if you could kind of each individually give like, are there things that hold you back the kind of resistances that you each have to deal with um, when it comes to either songwriting or, or performing uh, kind of things that you have to deal with uh, that kind of hold you back. Uh, Joe, could you start? Uh, absolutely. I mean, I would say the, the easiest answer always is the internal editor or critic or jackass or whatever you want to call them. Mm. Like, that little voice that just says, oh, this is garbage. You should probably throw it in the trash and yourself. Like, um, <laughs> like I, I think I, I definitely, when I sit down to write, it's a very, at the risk of sounding precious, it's a very pure process. You know, there's, there's, mm. there's process to it. There's tools and ways I go about it that are sort of processes in place. But for, for the most part, it's a very intuitive process in the beginning where it's this germ of an idea or this little flicker of a melody or something like that. And it all folds very intuitively, unfolds very intuitively. And the real problem is when you start to get that voice that just says, uh, this is terrible. What were you thinking? You know? Mm. And I think that fighting that is such an age old battle that it's not really a struggle anymore. What it comes to now is when I'm trying to do something new and that creeps up, you know, finding that sort of critic sounds is like, that's fine. That's what everybody deals with. It's annoying, but you know, you sort of start to paint on a like little silly face on that voice in your head after a while. You're like, Oh, that guy again, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, But it's when you start to find ways to, it's almost like antibiotic resistance. (laughs) When you start to find ways to get around that silly Mm -hmm. voice, and to evolve around that silly voice, that voice finds like a way to evolve too. And it starts to find like new dick moves to get in your way. <laughs> and uh, and yeah. uh, 
And I think for me, that tends to come primarily when I try to do something new, because it can put a new face on old doubts. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. It's like that the the killer and the the, the scary movie that keeps coming, like no matter like how many times you beat it down, it's going to like keep coming at you. And I, that's one of the themes of the show is that like, it's probably always going to be there for the rest of your life. So like, get used to it, you know, like, yeah. kind of bring him in and be like, hey, guy, like, try to like, put a, like you said, like a like a silly face on him and be like, just make him a little bit less scary. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's sort of like it's sort of like Ghostbusters, right? Where you try to put something silly on it, and then it still turns into the scary. Th- you're like, it's the <laughs> Marshmallow Man. It's fine, and then it just like blows up over the whole city. And like, so like, true. It doesn't matter what you do; it's coming back. And I, I like, I'm not a scary movie person. I genuinely get scared. Um, <laughs> but I'll watch them if I know that at the end everything's done. But if there's like a hook coming around the corner at the end, or if there's like Freddy's hand reaching around a doorway, like I'm out, I'm out, right? I just can't right. take it. But that's life. That's, I think it's why I can't take it. Cause that's real life. Like that's what life <laughs> is like, is that like your ghosts and your fears that keep on coming back and trying to fight you in new ways. And it's a little too real for me, but I, mm-hmm. but, but like you said, you know, it is, it's going to be with you forever, but you know, you keep on keep on repainting it at that as that stay puff marshmallow man or it as you know as like a funny puppy video and just see what see what you can do to get past it for the day because you can always get past it for the day i think if you can get past it for the day you know you can make it to the end of the song if you can get past it for the day you can make it to the end of the gig if you get past it for the day you can make it to the end of the album it's just a matter of one day at a time. It's it's sort of it's almost twelve steppy in its zenness, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, it's so true. It's it's taking it short term, you know. Yeah. It's you know because like like I said, it's a lifelong battle and a life is a long time. <laughs> so it's it's like you have to cut it down to just day by day. Just let me get it through it today, and we're gonna be good. I don't know if you know. Uh, spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't seen Halloween H two O. She she cuts his head off at the end, and they still made more movies. Yeah. I- <laughs> like, <laughs> I, don't. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, that just that kind of stuff just makes me so angry. I'm like, he's yeah. dead. I know he's dead. You're, yeah, you're That's, lying to me. The horror genre is not good for you, then, Joe. It's not. It's not. <laughs> My ideal horror movie is Cabin in the Woods. That ending was fine for oh, me. Oh <laughs> man, that, that was a perfect movie overall. It's like it doesn't get more done than that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, e W. What about you? Do you have things that hold you back? Um. Yeah. Uh, I'd say lots of things. I mean, a lot of it is around my ability, my inability to pay too much attention for too long. You know, mm-hmm. either that or it's, it, I vacillate widely between sort of just being totally squirrel brained and totally hyper focused on something to the exclusion yeah. of all else. Oh, amen. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. I'm with you too. And, and it's, uh, that, that just sort of managing that whole thing and then still being reactive. I think, I think in everybody who does lots of creative things, you know, and especially more, uh, longer arc projects, you kind of have to be in a situation where you're flexible and able to react to changes. Not just in the way the project is going, but also in your own life, you know. And one of the things with me is like that inability to focus combined with the extreme hyper focus, I feel makes me a bit inflexible in a lot of ways. And, uh, you know, so <laughs> something, you know, it's like, oh, damn, you know, that power bill's 500 bucks. <laughs> oh, shit, I didn't mm. do it since October. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Right, right. That's like one of the one of the things I'm always struggling with, and and also you know this extends too to like talking to people. It's like you got to constantly maintain relationships with everybody in your world. There's one of those things that's a bit of a hold up because it's like I wouldn't find any value in this thing that I was doing if I was living in a cave on my own, <laughs> you know, mm. or I wouldn't mm-hmm. find the same kinds of value, and I wouldn't find the same kind of journey and same kind of exploration. But you do have to call people on the phone and say, how you doing? How you doing? You know, you do have to go to people's birthday party. You do have to, like, go to work. (laughs) You You do have to show up for, like, pub gigs. I mean, regardless of the fact that I'm going to be playing Tom Petty covers for three hours. So I'd say that's one of my 
biggest holdups, you know. I mean, there's the constant struggle of everyone in a rapidly declining support system for people who don't make a lot of money and for people who don't, uh, or for people who are actively involved in the arts, like subsidies for such things, support networks for such things are pretty much grassroots, you know, and some are well-defined and some are not well-defined and getting into the well-defined ones isn't always that easy. And, you know, even those are, you know, kind of on a time limit, depending on the extreme efforts of a few people. Ultimately, it's the balancing act, I think, is my biggest hold up in all these sorts of things, aside from everything that Joe mentioned, you know, because I think we all get that. But the, the, the balancing act between, like, I, I live most of my life in a fantasy universe in my own mind. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? I'm with you. Yeah, it's so, like, it's sort of like, you know, that's every once in a while prodded by mostly fiction. <laughs> mm. you know and so like sometimes i just i get confused i get very confused about reality and i i'd say that that often you know comes against me in a lot of situations and uh but i i think it's somewhere honestly i think it's somewhere in between that space that you make that you do your best work you know it's the like coming out of your own fantasy and trying to find that Venn diagram where it meets everyone else's own fantasy, (laughs) Hmm. you know, and reality is in that little sliver in between. I think just trying to hold on to that and, you know, to make that effort in addition to all the other things that are cooking in the back of my own mind are, you know, big holdups for sure. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But I think uh, I think pushing towards the the fantasy uh, is a, an important thing to do. Oh, really? Pushing towards that, as opposed to pushing towards staying in this kind of uh, reality that uh, perhaps other people have kind of made for you, or society has kind of oh, shaped agreed. for you. You know what I mean? I think it's agreed. important to kind of try to detach <laughs> if possible, <laughs> yeah. oh, and, and to and to push towards those kind of fantasies. Absolutely, um, guys. This has been an absolute pleasure uh but it is time (laughs) for the final final push (laughs) and this is where i ask you to both reach through the microphone and grab the shoulder of one of the listeners that you've already really inspired today and just give them your best words of advice and really push them to pursue their own creative passions uh ladies first (laughs) right on i mean i would just say that my number one most obnoxious piece of encouragement is the nike motto and i hate myself for saying that (laughs) so much but Mm. but it's it's so it's so true that sometimes you just gotta do whatever it is that means go ahead and do it in terms of doubting yourself go ahead and do it in terms of working on the project go ahead and do it in terms of throwing things away just do it in terms of crying in terms of celebrating in terms of doing something that will make you look stupid in terms of not doing something until you have figured it out a little bit better and you're going to make yourself look great. Like there are so many ways you can do the thing. Mm. There are so many ways you can second guess yourself. There are so many ways you can push yourself through, but do one of them, do one of them, any Mm. one of them, do something and find out it was great. Do something and find out it was wrong and learn from it. I, I read about this guy that like, I don't know. You seem like the type of person that would have re- read about this guy. I don't know if you've heard of him where he like made a game out of failure. No, I like it. Um, and, and it was basically like, I'm going to totally botch this, but it was like he had to fail a hundred times a day or something crazy like that, you know, like, like, <laughs> like five times a day or like a hundred times a year or something like that. But like he had to, and he basically was trying to re- rewire his brain so that when he failed, he got points for it. That was sort of the idea because we're so wired to have failure register in our bodies as like our adrenal reactions are just like, no, I'm going to die now. Right. You know, and, and he was like, I just needed to take on this, this task of rewiring my brain to celebrate failure. Mm. Um, and so he basically made a game out of it so that he would push through and do something and fail. And that would be Right. Because if you don't push through and you don't fail, as we all know, you don't do anything, right? Absolutely. And so as much as I hate failing and as much as I hate 
you know, pushing for something and having it embarrass me mortifyingly. I'm one of those people who can't watch like meet the parents. Like I can't watch, see, you're learning about all the movies I can't watch. Um, <laughs> I can't watch embarrassing movies or I, I can watch them, but I like get up and walk out of the room during the like really mortifying part. Right. Mm. But again, similar to scary movies, I think this is because it hits a little too close for home for me because it's what we have to do every day. Right. We have to go ahead and say, okay, I did this. It was maybe mortifying and I maybe feel like I can't come back from this and oh wait look I'm not dead Mm -hmm. right you know I can't make it to the end of the day because I'm gonna fall flat on my face oh I did fall flat on my face and I still am alive at the end of this day that that's sort of our forever struggle and so you know if I were to take someone by the shoulders from your audience right now from our audience right now I would just say you know I pushed through for my first album and I said, okay, I got to do this. And then I pushed through and I said, okay, I can't release this yet because I got to fix this, 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 and this. And then I pushed through and said, it's never going to be perfect. I've got to put it out in the world. Whatever your project is, whether it's, you know, something brilliantly scientific or whether it's something poetic or, or whatever it is, I just so want to take you by the shoulder and say, look the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man in the face <laughs> and, and look the embarrassing scene from Meet the Puckers in the, play, in the face and look all of the horrible, terrifying things in the face and just know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you will still be standing at the end of the day and just do it. Mm, I love that. Yeah. Humans are, are so adaptable and, uh, yeah, kind of like you were saying before, like like getting that flu shot. It's like uh, getting a failure out of the way and then realizing that it's okay and then the next failure will feel like 50% as bad, but you know, you're going to be you're going to be okay and then it's just like looking for those failures, like to just keep yeah. putting yourself out there and 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 knowing that a whole bunch of no's are going to come before the yes comes. I love it. It's like a vaccination. Yeah, a complete vaccination. EW, you got right a lot on. to live up to, man. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Uh, so I would say if I had to reach through, uh, you know, if I'm reaching through, through the, the, all the tubes of the internet, um, and I was going to say something to somebody, I was like, it'd be like, we all got a lot of people inside of us, you know, and there's Mm -hmm. a lot of people outside of us too, but there's one of those people inside of us and maybe some people outside of us that think we can do the thing that really believe we can do the thing we want to do. You know, mm-hmm. the thing of it is, is you want to, you want to listen to everybody, but you want to trust those people, Do you know? Yeah. <laughs> like. I'm sorry. I just got a little amen in there. <laughs> amen, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's really, that's really all the thing is that, you know, I know mm-hmm. plenty of people who get railroaded by their own confidence, Do you know, mm-hmm. like the, the fake one, Do you know, the one that I can do this because there's nobody else around here who can. You know, but the the one who believes that you can do the thing that you want, that really believes it, and the other people that do that are out in the world who you may not have even met before, those are the people you have to trust. But that's not to say that everybody else doesn't have reasonable information, most of which you've already probably thought of. <laughs> you know, but right. like, especially when it comes to encouragement. But I'm saying, like, coming up, some of my harshest critics have been some of my greatest teachers. You know, people who straight up didn't like me at all, (laughs) you know, and it's very easy to get railroaded by those people, you know, especially if you're in the early stages of doing their doing your thing, you know, it's very, very easy. But that person that that is inside of you that believes in you, trust that person, you know, and that person will lead you to the people outside of you and the other people inside of you that trust you, too, and can make the can help you to make the thing happen, you know. Amen. <laughs> no, I completely agree. Gosh, guys, thank you. Thank you so much for, <laughs> oh, for coming no, on. Pleasure. Thank you. I love being able to talk to you like as you're like kind of in the middle or the be- really the beginning of creating uh-huh. this new thing. And I, I can't wait to see uh, where it goes. <laughs> we can't wait to share it with you. Thanks for having us here. Yeah, no doubt. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and you can find uh, EW and Joe at cavesandclouds.bandcamp.com and we will have all the links to everywhere else to find them at yourcreativepush.com slash cavesandclouds. Guys, thank you again. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you.
Oh man, such a great conversation with two people with such great energy. I really enjoyed my conversation with EW and Joe, and they perhaps had two of my favorite final pushes. Um, But before that, Joe had this really awesome quote, uh, and I'll read it to you. It's almost like an antibiotic resistance. When you start to find ways to evolve around that silly voice, that silly voice finds a way to evolve too. It finds new dick moves to get in your way. And for me, it comes when I try to do something new because it can put a new face on old doubts. And I think that this is very familiar to a lot of you listening right now. It takes on new, scary shapes and forms it finds new ways to infiltrate your brain to make you doubt yourself especially when you are trying something new and it's just so important to remember that fact that it is going to be with you forever in one form or another it's going to take on many shapes and forms and it's going to stick with you you won't be able to quite get rid of it and that's the whole point of the show is the fact that no matter how far along your career that you are no matter how long you have been doing your creative passion, there's always going to be these these doubts, like those horror movies we were talking about. It just keeps coming. The sequels just keep coming, and you can't shake them. So, like Joe said, the best way of getting past it is getting past it for the day. If you can get past it in the short term, just for 24 hours, just for a day, just until you put your head down on the pillow, you will have succeeded Tomorrow is another battle and perhaps a a different battle as your resistance has time to kind of regroup and and to put on a new face or a new mask and, and get new weapons and new armor. Just get by that resistance today. And like EW said, uh, the best way to do that in the long term as well is to trust the people inside of you and outside of you who believe in you. It's to allow those people to kind of infiltrate your thoughts, to allow those people to be your support system, to embrace those people that uh, kind of overlap in your Venn diagram with the the fantasy that you have uh, for life and that you have for your creative life. So my thanks again to EW and Joe Definitely go support them if you dig their music, if you dig their vibe, if you dig what they're talking about in this episode. Support them on Indiegogo. You can get their album by doing so, uh, as or you can get a, a home-cooked meal for yourself, uh, dishes included. You can head to Indiegogo and search Caves and Clouds, or head to our show notes page at yourcreativepush.com slash cavesandclouds, or yourcreativepush.com slash 212 uh, if you want to find that as well as all the links that we mentioned today. And you can also hit up the Facebook group to join the discussion about what horror movie or awkward comedy movie or character uh, you kind of liken your resistance to. Is it Michael Myers relentlessly coming to get you even after you've chopped his head off? Or is it like having an awkward weekend with your father-in-law? To get to that group, you can head to yourcreativepush.com slash group. That'll take you right to the Facebook page, and you can join in the conversation. Uh, But that's all I've got for you today. Hopefully, you were inspired to go and get your work done. So go and get it done. We are going to leave you with the song Dangerous by Caves and Clouds. Go and get some amazing work done, and we will see you on Thursday. If you need the push again, I love you all, and we will see you then. Bye. I was a half a can of gasoline We can make a bright light With the vapors coming off of me Violence in the heat of This kind Be dangerous Must be dangerous Must be dangerous Am I dangerous We were just some mirrors Hanging in a man
Streets of firelight ways I don't ever dream someday People go my green earth ray We must be dangerous Never miss a push. Head to yourcreativepush.com slash subscribe to find the easiest way for you to subscribe to the podcast.